Now, whenever I told you guys I would, I would address the, uh, the gift that you guys gave me, it wasn't like that I was expecting it or anything like that. It was just like, man, this fits in really good with what, what uh, I'm going to be talking about. And that's what that God does for me each and every um, Sunday, it seems like. And so um, I hope that you're, you've, uh, you've come to strap in and get ready to hear from, from the, the Lord today because I believe that the Lord has been speaking to me all week long. Um, and uh, like I, I said, it, it might not be for you. It might be just for me to listen up again um, because uh, a preacher needs preach to sometimes. Uh, listen to uh, uh, a couple of funerals yesterday and a minister behind the pulpit yesterday. He was talking to other ministers that were on the stage. And he says, preacher needs preach to also, don't, don't he? And I was like, amen. I know exactly what you're saying. That's me. Um, there was, a, I don't know, I, I, there's some of you that have uh, uh, celebrated anniversaries. Um, I don't know, Cassandra, what, what, is she still here? Where'd she go? Okay. She, yeah, she, <laughs> she did. <laughs> she absolutely went on vacation. Uh, her, we celebrated her grandparents' anniversary yesterday, and it was like a, a big milestone, like 70-some years. I don't really know. Yeah, it was like uh, huge. Um, but uh, I heard a story about somebody that was celebrating 30 years uh, of marriage, just 30 years of marriage. And and uh, husband comes uh, to, to the wife and says, you know, thank you so much for being married to me for 30 years. You've been so grace, gracious towards me and, and loving and kind. And you know, we, it hasn't always been easy, has it? He said, there'd be times that I just made you stark, raving mad. And you, you never did fight back. All 30 years, you never fight, fought back. But it was kind of interesting because every time that we had an argument, you would just go off and clean. That's what you did. You just, we had an argument, I would, I, would, I would face you, and you would just go off and clean. And after you got done clean, you'd come back, and you'd just be happy and cheerful, and then you were just like, you know, honey, what can I do for you? So I appreciate that, but I just want to know what happened. You know, you went to the bathroom a couple of times and, and cleaned. What happened? And she says, well, honey, when I went to the bathroom, I started cleaning the toilets and the, and the bathtub with your toothbrush, and I came out, and I was just fine. <laughs> Uh, but I tell you what, I don't know about you guys. Um, can I just share my heart with you this morning? I've had a discouraging week. And it's not necessarily personal or anything like that. We just, you know, we, we're, we're going through stuff together as, as a church. Uh, I've, I've heard conversations, I've had conversations with, with some of you, and, and, and kind of, you know, if you've had a conversation with me, don't think that I'm just talking about you, okay? Because I've had a lot of conversations this week, and there have been discouraging conversations because I've, I've heard heartbreak. I've heard, I've heard a lot of emotion in people's voices, and I've heard people that are going through stuff, you know, and it's not necessarily just discouraging because we have hope, but it's just like, Oh, we've had a lot of conversations, haven't we, this week? And, and I know that a lot of you are going through a lot of stuff. But not only that, you know, there's, I don't, as a Christian, I don't know if you get, go through seasons where you feel like that you're losing a battle. Feels like that, that everything is up against you. There's seasons where it feels like that, man, we're winning, we're doing stuff. And then there's seasons that just kind of draw back and you have weeks like we had this week of uh, uh, funerals and, 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 and hiccups and relationships and stuff like that um, where we just say, man, it feels like that we're losing. God, where's the victory at? And so... I look at scripture and there's a couple of things that I've looked at, you know, and we live in a cultural climate and we've talked a little bit about this last few Sunday school uh, meetings that we've had. We live in a cultural climate where it's difficult to tell what is right and wrong, what's black and white, and there's really not in our culture, it's really not that. Sometimes people get upset with certain stances that church people uh, stand upon they're just like man what what is up with the church there it's unloving uncaring you know what we should just do away with the institution of it but then i look at a a chapter like john chapter 16 where where jesus talks about how he is going to work through the church and how he's going to equip the church is through the holy spirit and he says that i am going to convict the world of sin 
I am going to be with you till the very end. I am going to guide you, get this, I am going to guide you into all truth. You know what he's going to do that through? You know what, how he's going to equip us to do that? Through the promise of the Holy Spirit. And you know what? We don't have to wait for that. We do not have to wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit because it's here. It happened at Pentecost in the, in the New Testament. And that's what he promises you. So do you feel discouraged today? Do you feel encouraged today? Do you feel like that there is no peace? Do you feel like there's, there's no hope? And, and I, I'm hitting on a, a bunch of topics today because we feel like that some of us are losing the battle and not necessarily me going through something, but me going with you and thinking, man, we need to tap into what God has equipped us to through the Holy Spirit. And there's a verse that, that it has nothing to do, well, it has everything to do with this, um, but it's not my text today, but it's something I've been walking in all week long, and I challenge you to, li to listen to this scripture. It found, it's found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. He talks about being led by the Holy Spirit. He says, since we are led by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Since we are led by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So I read that. I've been, I've been walking in that all week long and, you know, I've probably been challenging Cassandra a lot because I've just been talking out loud, asking questions out loud to her um, and, you know, maybe just really confusing her a little bit because, you know, uh, on, on the way to this anniversary party, you know, I, 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 uh, I told her, I said, you know, this might be kind of odd that I'm bringing this up, but I've just been walking in the scripture all week long, but um, there, there's something that just kind of came to my mind about walking in the spirit. And she really helped me out with this. I said, I don't know if this is just me personally, I said, but you know, there is times in a pastor's life that they get called away. Um, and I said, I don't see that happening anytime soon with, in Watonga. I said, but uh, I really enjoy it here. Um, I envy some of you guys' job in the church, though. I really envy it. Because this job comes with a title. And sometimes with that title, whenever you go and meet strangers or people that, that do not know the Lord, people already see the sign that's on your head and saying, you've got an agenda. You want my butt in the seats at church on Sunday morning. I know what the end result here is in this conversation. You guys don't get that luxury. You guys get the luxury of coming with no intention at all except for the love of Jesus Christ to come up to folks and talk to them about the Lord. And I envy that about your guys' job in, in, in the kingdom. I want to go to somebody and they're saying, you know, what do you do for a living? And they say, you know, I, I'm, I'm mow lawns or, you know, I, I'm a handyman or I'm a teacher. And then they say, well, what do you do? I don't, I, I don't want them to, to know that I'm a pastor sometimes because I want them to know I love them first and I don't have an agenda. So I'm telling Cassandra, I said, you know, there's a temptation for me that whenever our season comes, for me to just want to step aside and be a layman. I, I love this church, and I would love just to sit in the place that you guys do and, and work where, where you guys work. Um, that was the temptation. I said, is that, what does that mean? Does that mean that, does that say something about my calling? Or does it, is, does it have an affirmation that I'm called to these people? that I love you, that I want to be with you, even if my vocation ends. I don't know what really what that means, but I, I, I got to wrestling with that. And Cassandra says, well, remember whenever, remember whenever we were at a different place before Watonga? I said, yeah. I said, she said, remember, we didn't know what to do. We went and interviewed at another church, and it just it, it felt weird. And we came home and we prayed and, you, and we, we made a statement saying that, Lord, if you want to move us, you're going to have to do all of it. Because we don't want to campaign for a job. Um, we don't want to fight for a job. And if they want us, they're just going to say, we want you and nobody else. 
And that was kind of our fleece to the Lord. And so I, I had a couple of pastors come to me and there was kind of conflict. I was pastor and I was youth pastor and I was doing a lot of stuff. I was the mail boy. I was the lawn boy. You know, just a lot of different stuff that was going on. And a pastor came to me and, and said, are you going to be a pastor one of these days? I said, maybe. He said, well, would you do the church a favor? Would you just do one thing? And I said, I'm just sitting because the Lord hadn't told me to do anything. The Lord hadn't led me. And something had happened one February evening in that room back there. Whenever we got a call from the Watonga Church to come interview, <laughs> got in there and we interviewed and it was, it, it was like nothing we've ever experienced before. We've interviewed in other places before, but it, there was a sense as if the Spirit was leading us. It felt like the, the things that we had done in the past, there was a door that was closed. So there was kind of this question that was up that said, why don't you do something, Kaysen? Why don't you move? Why don't you, you know, commit to one thing? And I'm saying, I don't want to move because the Spirit hadn't told me to do anything. And I'm glad for that. I'm glad because without the Spirit, I wouldn't have been here. I believe that the Spirit was leading the board. I believe that the Spirit was leading me, and we were all in one step. So I come back and revisit this passage of Scripture, and I've been in it all week long. So if we have been led by the Spirit, then keep in step with the Spirit. Are you in step? With the Spirit. What does that even mean? What does it mean to be keep in step? It's kind of like this military regiment. It's like the everybody keep in time. Let's go together. You know, so keep in you've been led by the Spirit. So keep in time, keep in step with it. The Spirit is leading. Are you following? So whenever the Spirit speaks, Paul says, You should listen. Whenever the Spirit says, Go, do you go? Whenever the Spirit says, no, do you say, no? Whenever the Spirit tells you to speak, do you speak? Whenever the Spirit tells you to lock it up, <laughs> do you lock it up? When He calls you to respond, do you respond? So since we have the Spirit, keep in step with the Spirit, Paul says, walk in the Spirit. So whenever I read this verse this week, I, I had to push away from my desk. I had to just say, this is a temptation for me. Kason, are you doing what it says for us to do? Are, are you doing that? The challenge is for some of you this week to ask the question, would you walk in this passage of scripture with me this week? Therefore, if you are led by the Spirit, keep in step, keep in time, keep in rhythm with the Spirit. Keep that in the back of your mind as we turn to John chapter 14 together. Would you do that? John chapter 14, and I'm going to start with verse 25. Jesus has been speaking to his disciples and he's kind of has, has told them kind of what's about to happen. He wants them to know that uh, something's about to happen to him. He wants them to be emotionally prepared. He wants them to be aware. He doesn't want to hide anything from them. But he wants them to be prepared. And he says this about the Holy Spirit in John chapter 14 starting with verse 25. It says, All of this I have spoken while I was with you. But the counselor, does anybody have anything else besides counselor in your Bibles? Helper. helper. What else? Advocate. advocate. Great word. Helper. Advocate. Comforter. The Holy Spirit. In other words, all these other things, ultimately it's the Holy Spirit. Whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I said to you. Peace 
I give to you my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad I'm going to the Father for the Father is greater than I. And I've told you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will, not speak, I will not speak with you much longer, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold on me, but the world must learn that I love the Father, that I do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much. Help us today, Lord. I pray that you, you give us what you ask, or what, you, what you promise the disciples as well, and that we earnestly desire that. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. The very end of this passage is kind of weird because he, he, he talks about basically the enemy. He's talking about Satan. He says, he's, he wants his disciples to be aware. I'm about to be crucified. There's a temptation. Temptation for you to be thinking that this is the enemy that is doing this. Whenever they nail me to the cross, you're going to think Satan has won. Whenever they crucify me, beat me, kill me, lay me in a tomb, you're going to think the enemy has won. But I want to tell you something. The work that I am about to do on the cross has nothing to do with Satan. It has everything to do with the work of the Father. You don't know how much I love you. Although that you get the sense while I'm walking with you hand in hand and you're seeing all this stuff that's going on, oh, you don't get it yet. You'll get it whenever you see me crucified. There's a temptation to think that the enemy has won. <laughs> uh-uh. There'll be a day whenever the light will come on and you'll see this is the love of me coming from the Father's will. I'm going to go be with him and I will give you an advocate. I will give you a helper. helper. I will give you a counselor. And, it's, and this is a good thing. 2015, United States of America, Western Oklahoma. If the rest of the world would look down upon us and say, okay, we're in Watonga, Oklahoma. But I have to tell you something, Watonga, Oklahoma, you, we, we are an affluent people. Even though the, the world might not think that, that we are, we are, are a fast-paced, busy people. Busy people, look around you guys. There are empty seats. And you want to know why that there are empty seats? I can tell you a list of reasons why. And the list of reasons why is because people are busy. That's their excuse. And that's the reason. And it trumps this. People are busy. There's a temptation. There's a temptation to put aside the things that God desires in your life because we say, God... I've got so much responsibility. I am so busy. One of the temptations with that is that whenever we come, become busy, if you're anything like me, during VBS, I think that we had the great, greatest VBS, but I felt so busy and I felt so far away from God. There's nothing against VBS. It was just the season. And I understand I understand busyness, but there's a temptation that if you do not make God a priority in the midst of your busyness, if you're like me, you feel farther and farther and farther away. We live in an affluent time, in an affluent area, that there's another temptation that whenever with affluence, there's a temptation for people to say, well, I'm a self-made person. Everything that I have got, I've got with my own two hands. I've, I've worked at it. I have, I have built this up, and I don't need anything. And the truth of the matter is, nothing that you have is yours to begin with. God has made you and equipped you with every possible gift. Everything that you have has been handed from the Father, and everything that is good is good because God had created it for you. 
So there's those, those temptations. And in the midst of all of that, there's a lot of gray areas. In the midst of being busy and being technologically advanced, in the midst of, of being self-made people that we can be our own gods and we can say, this is what's right and this is what's wrong and we don't even look to the counselor, we don't look to the helper, we don't even look for the advocate, we don't even look for the truth in this. When we say we are self-made people and, we, and whenever we say that, we sometimes we have to look inwardly and say, what does your gut tell you? What, is you, what are you feeling? Are you feeling annoyed right now? It's probably, it's probably everybody else if you feel agitated right now. It's everybody else's fault but yours. Do you feel sad right now? It's not your fault. You feel happy? Well, great, because you've created your happiness. And there's a temptation that whenever we don't look to the advocate, whenever we don't look to the helper, we don't look for the truth. And whenever we start off today, you know what the Spirit does? He says, I will guide you into all truth. We're going to get into that just in a little bit. But our world has become so dysfunctional and becomes a, a, a point where we feel like that we're losing the battle. So whenever we talk about walking in step with the Spirit, let me ask you, how are you doing walking in step? The goal isn't if I am becoming more like the world. The goal is, is the world becoming more like me? The temptation is that whenever we're walking with, with the Spirit, if we're a Christ follower, there's always the temptation to just give in to what the world surrounds you. It's like, I want to become more like them. We have students here that I want you to pay close attention to this because whenever you're in high school, there's nothing new under the sun. Each and every one of us have gone through this acceptance type of thing of saying that I want to become normal. You were created to be more than normal. Those of you that, that are going off to college, there's a temptation for you to be with the in crowd and you were made to stand out to be a, a salt in a salty, saltless world. You're meant to be light in a, in a darkened world. And any time that you give in to saying, I'm becoming more like the world, you're becoming less like the creation that God created you to be. Are you in step with the Spirit? Right now it feels like that we are losing that battle. So I have to ha ask, how aware are you of this gift of the Holy Spirit? How aware are you? I have a helper. You have a helper. You don't have to fail at life. You don't have to feel like a failure. You can win this battle. I can win this battle. Right now in your life, do you feel connected to the power of the work of the Spirit in your life? Because I tell you what, in the, in the midst of this world where you're just unsure about what is truth, this is what the Spirit helps you do. He says this, I will guide you into all truth. Unaware of what truth is? Better be seeking the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Feeling lost like you don't know which way to turn? There's a helper for that. There's an advocate for that. There's a counselor for that. <clears throat> but he promises peace to the Holy Spirit. Um, Tony, would you go to the next slide that's, that's right there? I want to show you guys something. I don't know. Tonight, uh, our weebies are going to be understanding the Trinity, a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I just was kind of caught up in this understanding of, you know, that we were made and created in God's image. And you guys know that we are Trinitarian as well? that we have a spirit, soul, and body. And I don't know, sometimes we don't really understand that. A lot of times what we find ourselves in, you guys can't see this, but right here above there, it's a body. 
whenever we talk about things that are our desire, there's a lot of good things in the physical realm. Hunger. There's nothing like eating a good steak. You know, anything fried sometimes is just really good. You know, um, sometimes a good salad is good too. But ultimately it all comes from a, a desire, a hunger. And sometimes we're led by that. We make decisions based upon what our internal things tell us what to do. But that sometimes can be a temptation to not be led by the Spirit. You guys can see that without me pointing. There's other things. Can I talk about it? We all have physical urges, sexual desires. Sometimes it, it causes us for our, our eyes to wander. Not that sex is a bad thing, because God created it good, but sometimes it, it, it makes us lead. It leads us in an area that is not spirit-led, and it me leads us outside the boundaries of truth and what the Spirit is calling us to do with that urge. There's the, the also the, the part of the, of the soul that we talk about that is an emotion, that is our thoughts. Right there in, in the middle of this Trinitarian of you and I, sometimes we have these thoughts, and, and you can tell it's right smack dab in the middle of spirit and body. And you can tell that there is a constant conflict between who influences who. Is it your internal... Um, urges or is it your eternal desires and sometimes whenever we get talk about the trinitarian the internal trinitarian the influences of us around each other and the culture that we live in the physical realm wins if it feels good do it the danger with that type of motto is is that you completely eliminated the third person, the eternal person of your trinity. And you're solely operating under the physical realm in saying that I am being led by what is not eternal, but it's temporary. I'm being led by the temporary things of life. All this stuff that I'm desiring and going after, although that I think that it might be making me happy, although that I'm thinking that I'm self-made, that I'm not even recognizing the Spirit of God, which is the eternal. So you can see how the body and the Spirit are a constant conflict with our thoughts, with the things that we desire, with our emotions. Sometimes words come into our lives <laughs> You say something to me and all of a sudden my emotions get rattled and I think that you're attacking me and I get short fused with you. That's called the flesh is what is talking. The spirit is not talking whenever I get sideways with my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's this eternal, in, internal conflict for what my desires to want to have my way. And I'm not in step with the spirit when I get sideways with you. And you're not doing me any favors whenever you're not in step with the spirit as well. Amen? It, I, it's awfully silent in here. It's quiet. <laughs> this is good stuff because I'm liking it. I'm preaching to me. So what an amazing gift the Holy Spirit is is because what ends up happening whenever we are, whenever he says, so we are filled, so we are led by the Spirit, let's keep in step with it because what ends up happening is that this side explodes. It's the bigger man. It's the bigger person in the Trinity. It's the one that influences us. It's the one that leads us. It's the one that we should be in step with because I put my shoes on just like you guys do. Sometimes my shoes go on before my pants and I get all sideways. I don't really know what, how to live this life and I mess up. And I look in the mirror and I say, God, I need your help. 
I don't know how to do this life. I don't know how to get dressed. I don't know which way is up. Spirit knows what's up. But how great is the gift of the Holy Spirit whenever he allows us to know what is up and what's real. A story of this uh, lady that was had a layover somewhere in, in Denver and she goes and she's got a couple of hours and so she decides that she's just going to go to the gift store and she's going to buy this little, you know, to-go deal of, of, of cookies, Nabisco um, chocolate chip cookies. And so she, she buys them and there's about seven of them in there, you know, just a really little one. She just paid 70 75 cents for seven cookies, you know, a little bite-sized one. So she sits down in the airport. She puts down all of her stuff, and uh, she opens the bag of cookies that she, she has, and this guy comes and sits, uh, has sat next to her. So she puts her hands in the, in the bag, and she eats cookie. The guy sitting next to her puts his hand in the cookie bag, and he takes a bite. And she's just like, what is going on here? Am I in the twilight zone? I mean, I don't even know this guy, and he's eating my cookie. So she says, well, I'll just see what happens, you know. And so she takes another cookie, eats it. The guy reaches his hand in the bag, eats another cookie. At this point, she's just furious. She's thinking, the audacity. I don't even know this guy, and he's eating my cookies? I paid 75 cents. He says, okay. So he ta she takes another cookie, eats it, and lo and behold, he takes another cookie and eats it. And she's, he's, okay, I've, I'm down to one last cookie. I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to see what happens. So she's just kind of doing this, like looking off into space. Guy finishes his last cookie that he took and he dips his hand in his back, picks out the cookie, breaks it in two, hands it to her. <laughs> And she just storms off. She says, oh my gosh, I'm just so mad. And she, she goes off and it's time for her to get into the airplane. And she gets in there. She sits down. She's still steaming about this guy that ate half of her cookies. She sits down. She gets into her purse and she's just digging around. She's just trying to silence her cell phone. And lo and behold, whenever she looks into her purse, she finds her bag of cookies that she had bought. <laughs> She said, the guy bought his own cookies and he was just being kind and I'm stark raving mad about it. He shared his cookies with me and I was mad that he was eating my cookies. Doesn't that happen to you sometimes? I mean, sometimes I just, I mess it up like that too. I don't, I don't know which way's up and I just feel like that I'm just getting it wrong. And sometimes I feel like the body's taking control. And this week, I've, I've been really wrestling with what it means to be in step with the Spirit. Because I don't want to be led by the flesh no more. <laughs> I, I don't want to be caught in this battle and feel like that we're losing. You want to know what the answer to the church is? The answer to the church has been the answer for, since Pentecost, since the church has started. The answer is being led by the Spirit. Being in step with the Spirit. If you look at scriptures of what, what the Spirit does to the church, it unifies you. It changes your attitude about each other. You begin to see with different eyes. You begin to love each other with a love that you've never had for, for somebody before. You know, Max, I don't like you at all. Man, you and I, we're going to have it after. But what the Spirit does is that he creates new things in me. I really love Max, by the way. Praise God for the Spirit, because if it wasn't for the Spirit, you know. That's what the Spirit does. That whenever you and I get sideways, sometimes the Spirit has to intervene in order for us to overcome those things. And not only that, guys. It has no, those are minor things. Inside this room, these are minor things. And, and we're talking about our purpose, our mission statement here. We're going to leave from this place... We're going to go out into the world and there's going to be a huge influence of, of, of people that do not believe the same way that you believe. And sometimes because you hear those things, the body is telling you, you know, their logic makes a lot of sense. But the Spirit, on the other hand, says that He will lead you into all truth. You want to know why? Why? You want to know why God gives you this gift of the Spirit? Because things are going to be confusing. You don't know which way is up and which way is down. And God says, I will give you a helper. 
because you can't do it on your own. I can't do it on my own. And he says this. He says, I'm going to give you my peace. <laughs> You're going to give me your peace? What does that have, what, how does that help me out? How does peace help you and I out? Because Jesus comes to us again and he says this. In this world, whenever I leave and when I'm here, you will have trouble. Uh, it's a guarantee, guys. <laughs> just because that you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, just because you've come to know Jesus Christ, Jesus himself comes to you, listen up, church, because this is where we get sideways sometimes. We think that, oh, how come God's doing this to you? Because he's told us this is what's going to happen. It's not God's doing, because in this world, you will have trouble. He didn't eliminate that. He did not eliminate trouble from your life. <laughs> Whenever you come to know him, you know, a couple of weeks ago, whenever I said, Jesus must have been the worst recruiter in the world because he didn't paint a very happy picture of this thing. And, hey, you come to know me, you get a mansion in glory. <laughs> you know, you get to walk on streets of gold. He didn't say that stuff. I'm going to eliminate all your troubles. All these disciples were thinking, are you going to come? Are you going to be the king of kings? Are you going to wipe, you know, the Persians and the, the Babylonians and the Romans off the face of the earth? communist? <laughs> Are you going to wipe them off the face of the earth? And Jesus says, I don't know what you're talking about, but what I do give you, I give you peace. Because in this world, you will have trouble. I'm not giving you the things that you're asking for. I'm giving you the things that you need. And it's a promise. Can I just say this, and I don't, I'm stepping on my toes as well, okay? I can say this in confidence that whenever, <laughs> this is not an enticing thing, because what we really desire, our internal urges, is that I want to find a place, I want to find a people who affirm the mess that I'm in. I want to find a group of people that will make me feel comfortable in the trouble that I am so that I don't have to face the trouble <laughs> that I don't have to go through the steps of overcoming this by just surrendering to something that I can't see you're telling me that I'm gonna have to trust something that I am not gonna do with my own two hands Jesus says, in this world, you will have trouble, but I don't want to leave you in fear, shaken and stirred up, because whenever you face that trouble, what I've promised to you is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Whenever he comes on you with power that you can just kind of, there's the trouble, I'm over it. <laughs> I'm above it. Although that it hurts, I've got the promise of the Holy Spirit to overcome those. He says, I don't leave you like the world leaves you. Because whenever you find people that affirm the trouble that you're in and the mess up that you've done, the truth of it is whenever you leave this world is still the mess ups. And we need an advocate. We need, we need Jesus Christ in our lives to help us overcome the trouble. We need to be forgiven. And in a prideful, self-made, affluent culture that is not willing to admit fault, that is not willing to admit, admit, admit the guilt of the Holy Spirit, saying, no, that, that, that feels too wrong. That feels too yucky. <laughs> but that's not right because it doesn't make me feel good. It's not being in step with the Spirit whenever we don't listen to His leading. We gather around a table that is so filled with grace.
Because Jesus himself is represented in the broken body and the spilt blood and the promises that he gives each and every one of us whenever we gather around the table. He gives you and I a promise of these are the graces and there are promises whenever that you whenever you submit to the will and the authority of Jesus Christ you want to know what he does he gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit can we have a few ushers come and disperse of these graces this morning Today we're going to wait until everybody is served and we're going to take communion together. And at the very end of this, I, you know, I know that this, it's a beautiful day today and, and there again, I'm, I'm going to have the temptation to say, you know, it's, there's a temptation to say it, it gets really busy and I know that there's things that some of you need to do. Um, can, can you just trust me just for a, can you trust the Lord what he wants to do in the next few minutes after, the, that, after these elements are passed that I, I know that there are things that we're facing as a church whether it be corporately individually and I just want a, a time to just respond just no, no emotional music just us being in step and led by the Spirit. And I don't know if that looks like standing where you're at, finding a place to pray in our, our prayer room, or coming down the altar, but I want representatives of the things, the hurts, the troubles that we're going through, um, troubles that, that, that the Lord has, has laid upon your heart. So we're going to take this together. I'm, I'm going to lead you through that. And we're just going to spend a moment, just a few moments. I know that it's getting late. But what we're exercising as a church, some of you guys hadn't had, had a meal since, you know, 6.30 this morning, and it's getting late. And the flesh is telling you it's time to go. <laughs> so we're exercising another thing today. I'm not saying we're going to stay here till 6. supper I can just imagine that there had been moments of enjoying each other's company moments of silence and moments of, of, of just an awe and wonder today we, we take of his broken body that was broken just for you and me he also took the cup and he lifted it up and gave thanks he says this is the blood of the new covenant that was spilt just for you. Can we just spend just a moment together? I mean, if you want to come and respond to the graces of God, you can come. Just a few moments together. <clears throat> I 
I have to believe, guys, that I wasn't talking just to myself today. And I don't, I don't really mean to be harsh about it, but come on, church. <laughs> Can we stand together? Can we be honest today? Can we be honest with our, our, our hurts, our troubles? Can we be, can this be a safe place for you? <clears throat> I want there to be a room and space for, not necessarily confession, of saying, you know, I, I've messed up or anything like that, but just a moment in time and space where you can just say, you know, I love him. You know, help me, Lord. If you want to do that out loud, you can. Just give him credit and honor. Just recognize him. If somebody wants to pray out loud, you can. Lord, we thank you so much for your graces. We thank you for the promise of the Holy Spirit, Lord. You know that it is my desire and it's your desire for the church to be filled with your Spirit, Lord, that we can be more than overcomers through you, Christ Jesus, because your Holy Spirit, because your life's blood breathes and washes us, Lord, and lives within us. God, I pray that you help us, Lord, overcome family situations, Lord, to help us in personal is issues, Lord, and, and communal issues. Help us to be the church in which that you desire, Lord. That we are able to extend grace and not, not look for just your hand or your handouts, Lord. That we are able to, to look beyond our own troubles, Lord. Because sometimes we can get caught up in that, Lord. I pray that you help us remove that. I ask that your, your presence give us healing. Ultimately, Lord, I pray that you give us peace. You give us peace and give us great conversation in our nourish groups, Lord. I pray, that, I pray that there's honest conversation that happens there, Lord, as well. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Be sure you love on a few people before you go today.